So Chief wanted me to come up. Uh, I offered to come up and talk about the new radios you're getting. Um, and I wanted to make sure that you have a, a better knowledge of the radios, what's in them, how they work. Uh, better knowledge about Mark's from the state of Ohio, which is multi agency radio communication system. Um, my name's Arlen Bradford, if you didn't know that. Um, and I've been with the state of Ohio for just over two years now. And Northeast Ohio is kind of my area. But being a state employee, I go from the Ohio River to Lake Erie to Pennsylvania to Indiana. Um, and I, I have been all over there in two years going through. But I wanted to touch base on radios and things like that. Just because I work for the state doesn't necessarily mean that, well, he's a state employee, so he knows everything. No, 37 years as a volunteer fireman, 15 years as a um, police officer, 20 years as an EMT, I let that expire. I can't keep up on all the CEs. So, um, but, so I've been in the seats, still in the seats. Um, and these are a lot of these are best practices that have been going on and on. Uh, I just got a letter from uh, FDIC, they want me to put a course on similar to this next year. Um, so I'm looking forward to doing something like that. But getting started here, who can you talk to on your Mark's radio? Almost anyone. Literally almost anyone. Every fire and EMS agency in Richmond County is going to be using the same radio system in the near future. The only fire department that is not going to be solid on there is Mansfield Fire. They do have a couple portables that they can communicate on. Dispatch for Mansfield Fire does have the capability of patching Mansfield Fire's VHF system over to the MARC system. So they do have that capability. So you do have interoperability in that. Plus, you're going to have talk groups from neighboring county systems and the state MARC's uh, interoperability talk groups. So Ashland County got a grant, they're going. I don't know where Mifflin Township Ashland is setting that right now, but they're coming on board uh, shortly. Um, all of Knox County is, all of Morrow County is, all of Crawford County is, um, all of Medina County to the north is uh, is coming on. So all if you just take it and look at a footprint all around Richland County, you can see things are going. Huron County in the process of doing something. Um, whether they go with their own trunk system or stay on to the, uh, come over to the state, they are going to have the same fire ground channels that we have in all your radios. And we'll talk about those channels uh, as they come up here. First zone is zone one, and that is your main zone. Probably 95 to 97% of your communications is going to be in zone one. So basically, you won't have to hit any button on your radio, turn it on and turn the channel knob one through 16. That's going to be the most that you would have to do. Going into the other zones, um, like zone two, we'll show in here, you can take it to the hospital zones and things like that. But all talk groups are a common naming structure. And we do that so no one's confused. So zone one, channel one is FD70 dispatch. And that is Richmond County's 911 fire dispatch. It's the same in Mifflin's radios, it's the same as in Springfield radios, the same in Franklin radios. They're all the same. You can't put in there county fire or county 911. You can't change any of that. Those are, that is the mandate on the state to come on board to the system. So all, all names want to be the same, just like uh, Knox County. We share these talk groups with Knox County and their radio. It's going to say MD 70 dispatch. Uh, so they're not just going to be any special naming in there. Common naming structure is used. Same talk group can be generally found in the same places throughout your radio. Um, so I'll give you examples as we go along here. Um, but there you're going to see similarities um, of this talk group, maybe in zone one, but it's also in zone last and maybe in zone nine. Um, the other thing is what is in your radios is closely the same as in the uh, law enforcement radios in the county. Uh, zone 1 and Zone 2 is going to be their primary zone and their secondary zone. And then the interoperability suite is after that. And every, every Mark's radio in the state of Ohio has its interoperability suite. Um, so in the event of a disaster or an event, everybody can come and play on one playing field. If you need mutual aid resources, um, you can get state resources or other county resources, ODNR, 
ODOT, all these people come in and can communicate on one radio. Um, nobody's on an island anymore. Talk groups shared between the Richmond County agencies have a 70 in the talk group naming. So FD70 dispatch, fire department, Richland County, the 70 dispatch. Sheriff's office is SO70 BISP. So that's a sheriff's office uh, dispatch. So you'll see the 70 in the naming in there. Incident talk groups by all law enforcement area wide. So in your radios, you'll see SO70 TAC 3 or XSO70. Um, so Captain Sweat Sheriff's Office authorized fire departments to have TAC 3. So that's your fire police talk group. So if you have, let's say, uh, a, a suicide or a stabbing or something like that, and you're staging, they may say stage and be on TAC, you know, SO TAC 3. So you go over there and you wait, and that just means the sheriff's going to be over on this attack three, or the dispatch may say to stay on our dispatch call group. Dispatchers going to give you directions on where you need to be. But those are in your radio. Incident talk groups shared by all firing MSCs. That's your typical fire drum. What used to be 280 here in the county, or 205, however it came through, they're now labeled 7563D, which is 700 megahertz of fire. And that's just where they fit in the channel structure of the FEMA. These are FEMA channels, and D means direct. Anytime you see a D at the end of a talk group name, that means it's walkie to walkie. It's off network. You can talk one to two miles, and you'll be fine. Um, we encourage all fire ground operations to be on that simplex channel. We don't need to worry about, hey, I'm fighting a structure fire here, and I'm on the interior. If you're on the key at my portable, I got to talk all the way to Mansi to hit the tower to come all the way back to the incident commander standing outside the door. It's better to just talk walkie to walkie. So those fire channels there, 63D, 6040, 83D, and 84D. As an incident commander, you don't have to go 7 fire 63D. It could be, you know, uh, 2201, county on the scene, two story wood frame structure, got smoke out the B side of the building. Mark this a working fire. Uh, this will be a 63D assignment. I said we're going to be on 63D, so incoming equipment, they get on the scene, they go to 63D, engine 81, 2201, we're on the scene, what's, your, what's our assignment? You're on scene, you're talking walkie to walkie, and, and it's crystal clear communications. As I said, main dispatch talk group, FD70, secondary talk groups, we have TAC channels, um, and so, which is very similar to your TAC123 on the VHF system. But we've got TAC 2 through 5. Why don't we have a TAC 1? Well, we have dispatch in channel 1 slot. Channel 2 slot would be TAC 2. Channel 3 would be TAC 3, 4, and 5. So you can do your channel numbering through there. Um, the other nice feature about this, let me grab a radio here that can go through and do. Seven, five, eight, three, so they, they will voice tell. What you're on. Fire dispatch. Tap two. Tap three. So while you're wearing your gear, whether it be in your pouch here or a purse like I carry, you don't have to look at the display. Tap two. I'm on tap two, I'm good to go. Or. So that's where I'm supposed to be. I'm, I'm good to go. Lock my radio, and, and I'm done. So now I can key up and talk all day long, walkie to walkie. Make that happen. <laughs> Status changes in round on scenes and everything. And anything that you're going to be talking to the 911 on needs to be on the dispatch channel. Um, FD70 dispatch. Um, at this time, that is uh, the primary that's going to go on. Maybe in the future, dispatch can assign off TAC channels and things like that. Um, each county is different on how they make that happen. Um, so, but know that you get toned out for a squad one, you know, MS-81 is responding. That's on dispatch. MS-81 is on scene, in and around the hospital, at hospital, and around the quarters. All that's done on dispatch. Um, that's where dispatchers are going to be. If you get toned for a working fire and Engine 81 is in route, is TAC 2 available? Doesn't mean they're going to monitor it. Just means that 
you can have a talk group that you can have all your connectors, your engines coming in and everything, have that communication. Now you have that talk group, that two, three, four, five, um, that, that's your disposal to use. But just know that you've got to go back to primary dispatch for communication. Talk group assignments comes from a dispatcher. There's another one that knows what's going on. So that's why we ask, is TAC 2 available or is TAC 3 available? Because they would know if Springfield's out and they're on TAC 2 and Franklin's out on TAC 3 and this one gets running, they say, no, those aren't available, TAC 4 is. Okay. Because at 2 o'clock in the morning, you're not listening to everything else in the county that's going on. So let the dispatcher do the directions for you on that. You can always request an alternate um, and the dispatcher will let you know if those are available. Fire grounds will be designated by the incident commander, and that's where I said chief one on the scene working fire all units operation fire 63 Delta. But respond on where you talk to dispatch and use where you talk between units and units and the incident. So just keep in mind fire ground is much better and uh, more solid communications on the um, seven fire channels, and dispatch always goes back to your channel one. As an incident commander, that's a two radio event anymore, just so we have so much communication that can go on now. <clears throat> Always leave your mobile vehicle on the dispatch talk group. So as you're en route to the scene and dispatch needs to give you further updates, they're going to be on dispatch. Um, so leave your radio on dispatch en route to the scene. Turn your portable to the assigned incident talk group, whether it be FD70, TAC2, or the fire run channel that you normally work with as you go along. Um, we generally pick uh, fire grounds that we're going to use. You could be on fire 63D, Springfield could be on fire 63D, and Franklin could be on fire 63D, and nobody's going to interfere with anybody. They're local, uh, local brands. So just pick, you know, I encourage picking a department, pick, hey, we want to use 63D, or we want to use 83D, and uh, that's your normal assignment, because then your portable's in the truck, you can leave your portable on, 83 delta that's going to be yours and lock it and then when you turn it on it's on 83 delta you don't have to do anything else just turn it on and, and go when you get on the scene um dispatcher must know what talk you're using at all times make sure you let them know where you're at so if for instance you're in route to the scene dispatch you know unit 402 is switching to tac 2 just lets the dispatcher know if they mark you on dispatch you're not going to hear them but when you're done and you come back, dispatch 401 is back on me. We're back on dispatch. Um, just common communication things there. Um, as it goes, um, like Morrow County, they they are monitoring the TAC channels. And as Richmond County expands and the new comm center gets completely open and running and things like that, we'll have these thought groups in there as well. Um, Richmond County is very, uh, through the grants and everything and departmental purchases, um, we're still in the infant stages compared to how things are going, but we're light years ahead already than what it has been years back. Medical helicopters. So landing zone coordination, you know, you have uh, the chopper roll will mark you for LZ information, patient information, and things like that. So in Ohio, there is an organization that all the medical helicopters belong to, OACCCP. I don't know the total acronym of it, but it's Ohio's Critical Care Association. OICCT. Yeah, that. Uh, but uh, they agreed that air to ground is the best way. A helicopter typically is at 2,500 feet. At 2,500 feet on a five watt walk, how many towers do you think he's going to hit? Quite a few towers in the state of Ohio. We did a test with State Highway Patrol helicopter. He was in Mansfield. At 2,500 feet, he lit up Cleveland Tower and he lit up Circleville Tower south of Columbus at the same time. That caused havoc on the system. It says, hey, I don't know where you're at, so it shut down. So we don't want to have that communication. So we recommend ATAC 92D. Remember, the D is a direct, and ATAC 94D is a direct. Every medical helicopter in the state of Ohio operate has these in there. When dispatch calls and says, you know, at med flight, need thing, we're on. Marks ATAC 92D. That tells them where they're going. The, the pilot and the medic know that they're going to get information when they're 10 miles out. At 10 miles on my walkie, talking to the helicopter at 2,500 feet, I have crystal clear communications with them. So I can give them all their LZ information, their patient information, 
and all that on those fobbers. That's why there's two. So you got two helicopters coming in. If you've got two helicopters coming into your scene, we recommend staying on the one fogger, the, the one channel here. But if you've got two incidents going on in the county, then there's a backup that they can go to. Uh, but because the pilots want to coordinate amongst themselves where they're positioned at and who's going in first and things like that on the air band radio. But those two channels in there, it's in your zone two, channel 15 and 16. It's in a couple other places in your radio as well, but definitely in channel 15 and 16 on, on Mifflin Township uh, radio. <clears throat> repairs. All radio access repairs should be done by the radio vendor. Um, these are high dollar computers and there's no user serviceable parts inside. So taking a screwdriver and opening it up is for the warranty and uh, it's best to have your vendors take care of that. Radios belong to your department. If you lose equipment, battery, anything, charger goes bad or something like that, get with your chief or the designated uh, person that the chief is putting responsible for communication to let them know what's going on. The other thing to do, you do truck checks all the time. What at my department I do, they pull the radio out. The first thing they do, this on, on the Kenwoods, there's a two-part battery. It's a safety lock. You flip the tab, and then you push down on the other tab, and that gets your battery off. I make sure my contacts are clean, nothing's bent or broke, no dirt. Put that on, make sure the belt clip's tight, and make sure the antenna's tight. Those are the common things that needs to happen on a radio because they do vibrate in the truck or as we're moving around, they can get going and get twisted. Do not use Loctite on the antenna thread. Red is really bad. Blue is almost that bad, but um, we've had to replace several radios that put red Loctite on them and it broke the case when you go take the antenna off. So no red Loctite. All the nice little red balloons represent 340 Marks towers in the state of Ohio. So this is how many towers are in place to get the coverage uh, to do. So from Richland County, you're used to familiar with, you know, North, um, Crestview, Lucas, you know, Garber, uh, Springfield, uh, Madison. So those type of things on the VHF system. It literally takes less towers to do the, all this communication, but it gives you the ability to travel. We could go down to Shady Side for a flood again through the uh, Fire Chief Statewide Mutual Lake Plan and say, hey, we need a boat and a grass truck. And Springfield could say, yep, we can send a boat and a grass truck. Okay, we're on Ecom 20. You go to Ecom 20, you go all the way down here, you get there, and they say, okay, we're now going to put you on Ecom 9 in the search and rescue over there. Take your radios with you, it, it communicates. You, you don't have to worry about it's not just Richland County that you're doing. In Richland County, the newest tower is the Shelby Plymouth Tower. It's labeled Shelby. It's at 61 and Dynager Road. The nice thing about that is it's at 400 feet and it's flat. So in our testing, we was able to be, uh, Captain Sweat from the Sheriff's Office was at Crestview inside the boiler room and had crystal clear communication. Um, not able to have been done before, but all this area is covered up here. Shelby's covered. Then we have the Mid Ohio Tower, which literally sits right across from Mid Ohio Sports Park Course, just in Morrow County, but it covers this portion of um, the thing here. The one thing I don't see on this is the Garber Road Tower. I just realized that. So there's another balloon right here on Garber Road outside of Belleville. Um, and you got the Mansi Tower, you got the Mifflin Tower right down the street. Um, and you got the Loudville Tower that feeds in over here. You got the Mount Vernon Knox County Tower that still comes in up here, even the garbage here because of the terrain here can shadow it. Um, but you can see there's a lot of towers that cover Richland County. And if you're on FDU 70 dispatch, anywhere you go in this area, you're going to hear your calls. You will not miss a call. You will not go out of range. That's the cool part about Marks. I could be in Mount Gilead and still hear So the Kenwood VP5430 is the portable radio that Mifflin Township has. Several other departments in the county have got them. Um, and we'll go through, just do a quick layout here. This is typical button layout in the Mifflin Township. Top button is going to be the backlight, zone up and zone down. We had that because they got some older Motorola radios and uh, had limited buttons and the side buttons was 
zone upside down. So to not confuse everyone, we kept the zone up buttons there. For that, we got the key lock, the emergency button. The emergency, if you hold it for just under three seconds, no matter what call group you're on, whether it be 70 disc back or 7 fire 60 3D, it makes all kinds of bells and whistles goes off when everybody's radio on that talk group. And it gives you a hot mic for 10 seconds. You know, hey, it's firefighter one. I'm disoriented here. I can't get out. So work on your Mayday protocol and, and how to do that. Typically, self-rescue, Mayday, Mayday, Mayday. You don't get a response from there. It's emergency. Those are three things. If you don't have a Mayday protocol, let me know and we can work with you to get something put in place there from other counties. <clears throat> so this is zone up, zone down here. These are soft arrows. And uh, on this here, it gives you your home buttons uh, on the display down here. So I've got home and um, home three. Unlock it. And those are just quick access buttons that you can hit. Here's the menu button. Uh, if you hit this here, it pops up the menu on the display. You can go through and scroll, select your backlight, your scan features, and things like that. Um, and then your home button. A takes you to your channel one, no matter where you're at in the radio. If you hit A, it takes you there. B takes you over to the Ashland County on the Mifflin radio, and C takes you to the hospital zone. So you can take and have communications all the way through and through uh, with that. So that's just a quick overview of buttons and everything on the portables. Uh, mobiles are set up basically the same way. Um, and power button, volume up and down, channel up and down, or talk group up and down. And then on your display here, so you have a site search. You hit that circle, it'll tell you what site you're physically on. This button here, if you hit the square box, it looks like a house, it takes you home. No matter where you're at in your radio, you hit that button, it'll take you back to. Uh, FD 70 dispatch. Zone up, zone down. This will get you into the menu setting. And there's a backlight setting here. So in the cab of the truck, if you're running, you can turn the backlight down so it's not as bright on you. That's your typical mobile layout. The microphone's the same way. Push to talk, release to listen, talk into the microphone. Um, there's no other features for that. The orange button works the same on mobiles as it does the portable. Zone one. So this is your typical zone one layout um, in your radio. We talked about dispatch, our TAC channels, our fire ground channels. And at March, we went ahead and gave you two other talk groups on the system, a northwest and a southeast. Those are talk groups that you can use accordingly. Um, they're not monitored at dispatch. They're just for fire departments that they can get on air and use. So if you wanted to move a tank or so, if you had it, a working fire and you didn't want to use a TAC because a couple other people are out on TAC, you can say, hey, go to FD70 Southeast and use that for our water operations. Now all, all the radios can have that and, and communicate on that. SO70, so that talk group is in the county sheriff's office and it's also at OSP Mansfield. Um, that's designed for interoperability communications that if you key up on that talk group, you could say, you know, this one township fire to OSP Mansfield on SO70. And they would key up and say, OSP Mansfield unit marking, S Mifflin fire, and we're on the scene of the two fire MVA. Can you give me an ETA on an OSP unit? That saves dispatch from doing a lot of extra work as well. So you have that capability uh, to do and to communicate on. We created the talk group 70 Mansfield fire. Um, they're not on it yet, but that talk group's there because we wanted to put a placeholder in here, and that's a live talk group, so this can work. The SO70 dispatch, that is a receive only uh, talk group, so you can listen if you go to try to talk on it, it's going to bonk at you. It won't let you communicate on that. Richland Fire Department, page one. Once this page in and thing gets moving and going, you can put your radio on channel 15, and it will not go off. Until your station tones go off, and then your radio will act just like a page, beep, 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 and you get your message from dispatch. So that goes there. And then we put FD70 dispatch in channel 16. The reason we do that, because if the radio is down here and I can't see it, 
I know I can go all the way left or all the way right and I'm talking to dispatch. I don't have to listen, guess, or anything, what channel I'm on. All the way to it stops, key, I'm talking to dispatch. That's what that's designed for. Zone two, we put dispatch at the top again. Ohio Health Ontario, Ohio Health Mansfield, Avita, Ohio Health Shelby. Zone uh, is three and four are designated for Ohio Health. We don't have those hospitals assigned yet, but those top groups are there and work. Then you got Galleon Hospital, 17. And then you, you notice all the two leading digits is the county they're in, so you need to know your county numbers. 17 being Crawford County, that's Galleon's Hospital, 5901 Mark Kenny Hospital, 0301 is Ashland Hospital. We put in the County EMA 70, um, that is a kind of a command and control call group, uh, large scale event going on um, with EMA coordination and, or EOC communication that can happen on EMA 70 and you can go over there. And then we put your surrounding counties, XS03, you can talk to Ashland County Sheriff or OSP Ashland, SO17, Proper County Sheriff or uh, OSP Cyrus and SO59, Morrow County Sheriff or OSP Delaware is who dispatches for them. But you can say Mountain View to OSP and they would answer you on that. And then in that zone two, there was that 15 and 16. Uh, that we talked about the aeromedical ATAC 92D and ATAC 94D. And that comes into the this is everything else in your radio. Uh, so zone three. We already covered zone two. Zone three is LECOM one through 16. That is local event. So local event one through 16. How that works is, hey, you got, you want to do a training or something and you're working Springfield and you guys, you know, did on one of your TAC channels, we want to save those for emergencies. You just go, let's say to LECOM one, you get Bifflin Township Fire or Richland County, anyone using LECOM one? Okay, what happened? So you tell your guys, hey, we're on LACOM 1 for this exercise. You're on LACOM 1, U.S. Marshal, is anyone using LA 1? Hey, Richland County's got LA 1. Okay. And he'll go to LA 2. U.S. Marshal is LACOM 2. Anybody using it? He's on 2. So those are the, hey, is anybody listening? If not, I'm using this talker. Same with the marks 1 through 16. Um, we got X marks 1 through 16 in those zones. So same thing. Hey, is anybody using marks 1? Nope. Okay, we're going to use it. Um, so those could be for training. Um, if you, let's say you're sending someone to um, uh, Suffolk or something like that, you got a couple of you going down to Suffolk, you can go over and say, hey, is X marks one being used? Okay, nope, not using it. Chief, you could be going down to Suffolk and say, hey guys, get me on X marks one if you need anything. And you can just be there monitoring. They know they can go over and have direct communication with you. What we try to avoid is taking all of Richland County's traffic. Just because your talk group works in a large area doesn't mean that you should. Because when you migrate from here to Columbus, that means all of Richland County fire traffic is now coming up on the Columbus system as well, just for your one radio. And that's a loading issue that we have to monitor and everything. So so you can use these LECOMs or XMARCS channels as travel channels. The next zone is the ECOM, ECOM 1 through 16 or 17 through 28. Um, and those are statewide coordinated events. Those are talk groups that if you're planning an event, call ahead to 1-800-HELP-DESK, or you can go the next zone over to the help desk talk group, key up and mark the help desk and say, hey, can I get an ECOM? I have a tanker rollover set on 71 and I need two ECOMs. I'll be, yep, ECOM 9 and ECOM 10 is yours. Let me know when you're done. Now when you call EPA and ODOT, you can say, hey, we're on ECOM 9 for command and control, cleanups on 10. So they have, now everybody has those in those radios and they can communicate. Um, so that, that's what's going on here. Um, we have all kinds of things going on in this world, weather, um, things like that, that could justify going with these. The next one over has the help desk and it is the MCOL MCOMs. So Richland County is in zone two. There's four zones in Ohio of marked coverage, and I'll show you that on a subsequent map here. Um, so you'd be on MCall two. So if you go to MCall two, you could say, you know, um, uh, Springfield Township Fire to uh, ODNR Columbus. Hey, we ODNR Columbus. Hey, we got a chemical spill. We got 108 gallons, approximately, that went into you know Little Sandusky Creek. 
and we get a wildlife officer, blah, blah, blah. And okay, go to MCOM2 and I'll have him uh, contact you. So you just go over to MCOM2, go to NR112 to let's fire on MCOM2. Yeah, officer, we got this going on, so that gives you communication. We don't have to worry about hearing our cell phones with us all the time and our turnout here and trying to do things. Everything's done into the radio, so you have communications from that. So, again, Richmond County is in zone two, so those are the two that you would have in there. The next zone is the state fire marshal zone. So, you can request a fire marshal's office to have dispatch call the 1 800 fire marshal uh, number and uh, the dispatcher just let them know that, hey, this is Richmond County, Midland Townships needing to talk with the fire marshal officer they have marked. And the dispatcher for the fire marshal should say, okay, go to Ops 2. So you just take your radio and go to fire marshal's Ops 2. You're standing by FN 12 to Midland Township Fire and Ops 2. Yep. Hey, Marshall, we got this one on, blah, blah, blah. blah. And then they'll give you the run around and a million questions and things like that. Again, saves you from having to carry your cell phone and do all kinds of other stuff like this as well. You have that instant communication. Zone 9, that's your air medical interops. Notice that ATAC 92D and 94D is there again in Zone 9 uh, because that's at the top of the air medical zone. And then we have, you know, Metro LC, Metro's operations, uh, Medivac, Aerivac, Life Flight, Med Flight. So that's that X Med Flight. If you go to X Med Flight and just mark MedCom, they answer you. It's 24 hours a day, there's a dispatcher there and can communicate with you. So those are in there. Then the next several zones, zone 10 through 15, is all 80 county SO channels. So Knox County is SO42. So literally, you could go to SO42 and talk to Knox County 911. Or you could go to SO25 and talk to the, not, or to the Franklin County Sheriff. Um, so those are all in there as part of the interoperability suite. Next zone over is the EMA regional zones. And those are monitored in Columbus. Uh, right now, they're monitored almost 24 hours a day with all the events going on in the world. Coronavirus, protests, all that heavy stuff. Um, but Richland County is in the Northeast Ohio. So you go EMA CO Northeast, and you can talk to Ohio EMA in there. Um, it is also monitored um, at the uh, Richland County EMA. Next zone over is the eight call zones. So these here, eight call 90 and eight tech 91 through 94, those are conventional repeaters, just like your TAC 2 repeater used to be. Um, those are just in the 800 megahertz. That's why the 8 means. That means that's an 800 megahertz frequency. And then just below them is the D. 8 call 90D, 8 tech 91D, and 94D. Those are direct. And those are FEMA sets up. So when the, like when Hurricane Sandy went through and all that happy stuff, or Katrina, FEMA set up these portable towers and those portable towers were set up for repeaters and that allowed everybody to communicate that went down there. So if you went down to New Orleans, you could take your radio, go to the eighth zone, and you'd be able to communicate with command and they would hand you off an assignment. The bottom of that zone, MTA1, MTA2, MTA3, that's Mark's Talk Around 1. It's just a talk around, it's a direct channel. Talk Around 1, 2, 3, it is digital. Uh, so it's crystal clear every time. Then we go into the next, which is the seven calls. These are all FEMA's uh, uh, channels, and they're, they're directs. And they're seven, so that means they're 700 metric frequencies that are in there. So that you got 18, 19 are the directs, and then 20 and 21 are the repeated version uh, of those that's in the radios. And if, they may say that, you know, you go to New Orleans or another hurricane or something like that, you make you do in your call out as you're going to give the information. When you get up here, go to 7 call 70. Let us know you're in the area. So you just take your radio and go to 7 call 70 and it says, hey, Mifflin Township, Ohio is uh, on the repeater. Okay, hey, go ahead and come to this address and bring your crew and get staged. We're doing this, this, and here, so that's there. And then they'll hand your assignment out accordingly to that. The next two zones are TOW 581 and TOW 649. TOW is not a tow truck. TOW stands for Tower on Wheels. That is a portable site that we can come in. We have three of those in the state of Ohio. They're big tandem axle trailers. 
um, weigh about 30,000 pounds. We come in, it's got a big generator in it, it's got its own side in it, and they're pretty neat to see because the tower is wrapped up inside, and then it just starts unrolling and it goes 80 feet in the air. And now we have an instant site. So if you have something going on, we used those when the tornado hit Shelby here last year. Um, we brought up a tow and some catch radios. We have, to our disposal, we have probably 500 radios that are setting waiting to be deployed at any given moment that something goes wrong or the uh, agencies need help. And so we brought up uh, radios, had the tow set up, and they had solid communication throughout all Shelby. The linemen, the Red Cross, um, the ham guys, everybody had a radio and everybody was on the same page talking. It wasn't, oh, I'm on this channel, but I don't have that channel. We alleviated all that. And that's what those toes are set for. And then your zone last uh, in Mifflin Air Radio is Ashland County, since that's where Audio Mutual Aid is going to be run through. And it is laid out just like Ashland County's channels are. So if you go Mutual Aid with Mifflin or the city of Ashland or what have you over there, just go to that zone and it's laid out exactly the way their zone is laid out. And as I talked about in that, you don't really do so much with the sheriff's office regional talk groups anymore. Um, they're not really monitored, but it does show you the county numbers. So um, as you get this on YouTube and things like that, and I get to the chiefs and they can either put it on a share drive or something like that. You can look at it, you get to know the county numbers and what counties they are. But this here is that MTAL and COM. As I said, Richland County is in zone two. I'm in Knox County and I'm in zone one. So, um, but that's how the, the zones are laid out uh, for the MCAL and COMs. This is the narrative and I kind of went through all this stuff on the previous thing. We talked about the MCAL, MCOMs, the ECOMs, the TOEs, um, we talked about the SO channels, don't really use the SO regionals, talked about the event channels that are doing, talked about the help desk, um, we talked about the national interoperability channels, the 8 call, 7 call, 7 laws, talked about the fire marshals, medical zone, the marks, pursuits are only in the law enforcement radios, so we have 8 pursuit channels and those are set up Pursuit 1 through 8, and those are done by Homeland Security Reasons 1 through 8 here in Ohio. And with that, those are in law enforcement radio. So if they do a pursuit, Richmond County gets into a pursuit, Columbus isn't going to have a talk group that they have. So they can go to a pursuit channel and carry the pursuit, and then every law enforcement agency in the state can participate in the pursuit. Then you have specific talk groups that are designed for Richland County. And we talk about interagency talk groups. That's why you have Ashland County in here. Uh, Jefferson Belleville is going to have Knox County in there. So those are the interagency talk groups. Those require an MOU, what's called a memorandum of understanding that we authorize you to have our talk groups. Um, so those are things that happen before uh, radios get deployed and all that. But at this time, it is questions time. Um, anything that I covered too fast or something we need to touch on. Uh, to go through. One of the things, you know, we're talking about air packs. Um, some radios can talk to air packs. I use a, a, a radio purse myself. Um, I can take and put my radio on. Let's see what it says. First. Zone 1, FD 42 dispatch. 7, Fire 63 D. So I'm in my Knox County zone, Fire 63D, which it should be your channel, and I believe. Fire so, so it's at seven Fire 63D. I have a Knox County radio. That's a Richmond County radio, and I got it. It works. So, mutual aid purposes, we can do that. Now, air pack. I'll do an example here. I have air packs on. A lot of times people, I'll use my COVID approved mask here, just kind of muffle my voice down a little bit, then I'm going to use my hand. A lot of times people put their air masks on, they think they have to yell to get their voice outside that pack. I want to show you what yelling and does and how that doesn't work. Because these radios, like I said, are a computer. 
They have noise canceling microphones. They're designed to pick up the human voice, not a case saw, not a pump, things like that. So, in a typical air pump, However, I can key up just like this, and it comes across crystal clear. A little soft, and it still comes across crystal clear. So, little things to, to, to help out in knowing uh, how your radio works. Just like if you're standing, if you're a pump operator and you're standing at the pump, levers are here and it's lame, you know, it's cranking out, you know, 200 psi. Don't key up your radio and start talking. Just turn your back to it, answer the radio, and go through it. You'll hear just a faint noise in the background. But, questions? Sweet.